morning, everybody. Nice to meet you all. So I'm James Kinley. I work at the, uh, in the customer success team at Red Panda. So I help uh, our prospects and our customers accelerate the development of their streaming applications from development to, to, to production. I'm going to talk today about how to build a modern streaming data platform. And, and this is what Red Panda has done. And it's to address, really, the gap in the ha what hardware can do now versus what hardware could do, say, a decade ago when our competitors and, uh, and other streaming platforms were developed. So there's three main things that have sort of changed over the last decade. Hardware is completely different now than it was, say, a decade ago. So we have m many more cores on a single machine more cash, much faster disks, which was always uh, a bottleneck um, uh, on a server. With things now like SSDs and particularly NVMe technology, that sort of I.O. layer is, is, is no longer an issue. And networks have sort of kept up with that, with that as well. So when our uh, founder and CEO, uh, Alex, started to build Red Panda, he was looking at that gap between how quickly the hardware had progressed versus how quickly uh, streaming data platforms had progressed. And it's sort of the current technology's inability to use that, that hardware. So we set out to, to close that gap. Clouds and containers um, are also new. But when you're running a stateful distributed system in the cloud, that becomes really complex really quickly. So. Red Panda sets out to make that as simple as possible. So make the application simple, make the way you deploy that application simple, and therefore that leads to sort of easier, more efficient, and more cost-effective deployments. And then when talking about um, microservices uh, and event-driven architectures, sort of operationalizing your streaming use cases, these architectures rely on having uh, a fast, robust, uh, secure messaging system to underpin them. Otherwise, these architectures literally don't, don't work. So Red Panda is very much designed to fit in with these um, event-driven architectures. So when looking at these three things, when you're building a, a modern streaming data platform, you need to make it fast, you need to make it simple, and you need to make it reliable. From a performance perspective, you need to close that gap between what the hardware can actually do um, and, and what, your, what, your, what your software can do. And when you're talking about a distributed system and more and more data streaming into to that system in real time, it becomes a difficult problem to solve. How do you divide and conquer that data and how do you make it almost infinitely scalable? So Red Panda does this by a, removing Java from the stack, that really does help. Removing any dependencies of any external systems. So making the application, written C++, a single binary, easy to uh, install. And that software leverages some advanced libraries which is able to better address the underlying hardware. So if you're familiar with how distributed sort of architectures work in deploying across multiple nodes, actually, if you're zooming in on a single node, a single server, Red Panda acts like a distributed system on a single server because it almost like shards itself across the cores on a CPU and um, acts like a distributed system across those cores. So those, its application threads don't move between the cores and if they need to communicate with each other, they do so asynchronously. So therefore, it's a completely non-blocking architecture. So when you're streaming data into a single machine, or whether you're streaming data into multiple machines, you're leveraging the full capacity of that underlying, uh, underlying infrastructure. This enables uh, use cases that can grow to a much higher throughput, but also achieve much lower latencies in doing so because you're removing the layers in between the software and the hardware. And in turn, what this gives you is a better performance, but also reduced infrastructure costs 
and then um, uh, because essentially Red Panda is running on a smaller footprint, whether it's on premise or, or, or in the cloud, that's going to cost less to run. It's going to be easier to easier to run, and ultimately it's uh, better for the planet as well. And then from an operational perspective, a modern streaming data platform should be simple to install, should be simple to configure, and simple to run in production. So if, it, if you're installing a, a single binary, and that binary is uniform across all of the servers in your infrastructure, that's easier to, to reason about. And if it has sort of centralized configuration, um, and just easy ways and multiple ways to deploy from an infrastructure team's perspective just makes things a lot more simple to, to run. A modern streaming data platform should be really easy for developers to pick up. So the, the barrier of entry should be as low as possible. You don't want to have to hire a whole bunch of sort of streaming data experts that need to learn about niche systems to be able to gain this performance the barrier of entry should be pretty low and developers should be able to easily pick up and leverage uh, a, a data platform. So the API should be consistent and you should be able to use a multitude of tooling um, and reference uh, lots of good documentation and examples to be able to build sort of your, your applications from, from end to end. The sort of lingua franca for this uh, in, in, in sort of data streaming platforms is the Kafka API. So whilst Red Panda is a drop-in replacement for Kafka, it fully supports the Kafka API because it's mature, it's over a decade old, well understood, and there's been a whole um, sort of decade's worth of development around the API. So there's multiple tools and integrations that you can just easily pick up and almost be able to write no code to be able to interact with the system. And this just significantly reduces the, the, the risk of adopting the, a modern streaming data platform. And then from a reliability perspective, uh, when you're <clears throat> integrating a modern streaming data platform at the heart of your infrastructure, it must be reliable. It must give you the same sort of guarantees as if you were uh, storing data at rest in a database. There are many advancements in the algorithms that can be used uh, to distribute streaming data. So the way, uh, say, Apache Kafka uh, done it, they went down their own road, they developed their own algorithms um, and the sort of their own state management system. Well, research over the past decade has proved with algorithms like Paxos and now Raft that there's a better way to do this. Um, and Red Panda uses the Raft consensus algorithm, which is kind of the de facto way of doing this now. So when you see, it doesn't have to be a streaming data platform, any sort of distributed system that's built in the modern era uses one of these modern uh, algorithms because they're well tested um, and, and proven. And this gives Red Panda and um, uh, sort of these modern deployments very predictable performance, even at high loads. So even when you're running at small scale, whether it's on one to maybe three servers, or you're running at a really high scale um, with 50 or 100 servers, the software works in the same way, and that performance is very predictable at, uh, at any load. So if you can provide assurances around you'll get this kind of throughput and this kind of latency from the system, you can communicate that out to your users and say, these are the sort of the, 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 the boundaries that you're working, working within. And, if this, and, and the software will always guarantee that you can work within those boundaries. So you have sort of a contract or this commitment from, from, from the platform itself. It's a bit logo heavy, but the, the idea behind this uh, architecture is to sort of showcase how flexible Red Panda is and how flexible a modern streaming data platform should be. So out of your, at the heart of your infrastructure, you've got this modern streaming platform. It can scale really easily uh, to um, meet the demands of your use case. So whether you keep that small and keep your footprint small, or you keep adding more and more 
nodes to that cluster to uh, grow as your, as your business grows. That's at the core of, of, of this architecture from a streaming data platform perspective. So here, this is all about making it easy, reliable, and fast to move data from A to B, from where you're collecting your events to where you're processing your events. The flexibility comes from uh, the ability to deploy anywhere. So you should be, it should be easy to deploy on-premise. It should be easy just to install the, the binary directly in Linux. You should be able to deploy in any of the cloud environments. Um, and you should be able to do that in a multitude of ways. So whether your infrastructure team is more familiar with, say, Terraform and Ansible for scripting the deployments, or they want to use Docker or Kubernetes, these uh, options should be, should be available to you. You should have full insight into the system. So ignoring sort of how you're collecting your data and how you're processing your data, you want to see how your data is being moved from, from A to B. So you need full insight into the system. So you need to know how well that data is distributed uh, in, in your streaming platform, whether there's a lag between how quickly you're generating the data versus how quickly you can, you can, you can read that data out of the system and, and be able to quickly identify uh, any, any problems. And then looking at sort of the left-hand side and the right-hand side, there's a common interface. That's the Kafka API. Um, so it's very easy to talk and interact with, with the system itself. And then you can also draw as many lines from left to right as you want because there are hundreds of different ways that you can move the data from A to B, whether it's some sort of CDC from a, from a static database or you've got um, thousands of uh, edge devices or IoT devices generating events. Um, whether your company is a, a Go shop or a C++ shop or a Java shop, you have all of this tooling available to be able to write easily write into, in, into the system. And then on the right-hand side, when you're processing that data, um, whether you're enriching that data via SQL, whether you're building or using things like TinyBird to build data products more easily and, and sort of speed up that productionalization of, of data products, um, whether you're writing that data into a data warehouse, whether via something like TinyBird into Snowflake or into Snowflake directly, all of these sort of connectors uh, exist. So you can almost draw as many lines from left to right as you want uh, because it's easy to connect your sources to, to, to your destinations and be able to deploy uh, Red Panda and the modern streaming data platform in, in any way that you choose in your infrastructure. And that's it. Thanks Thank very much. You.